Hello everyone, in this series of videos we're going to talk about how to work with weapons in Cascadeur. In this particular one I'm going to tell you how to add weapons to your scene and also how to create the controllers for the model which does not have a join skeleton. It is often though that you have to add the weapon to a pre-existing scene with a character. As an example, I've prepared a set of weapons which all have different nuances to them. Here I have one which does have a joint skeleton. Here's another one which is geometry only, without any joints. And finally I have this axe here which consists of several meshes, without any joints and also is out of scale. And now what I'm going to do is to add these weapons to a pre-existing scene with one of our default characters, Cassie. Now, to add the weapon to the scene, let's first switch to the rig mode. While in the rig mode, go to File, Import FBX, Model. And for the first example, let's pick the one which does have a joint skeleton and is scaled properly. And we can see it appear in the scene. Now let's move the weapon closer to the character's hand. You have to select the main joint of the weapon to move it around. You don't have to do this, but if you do, when reset to T-Pose, the weapon will return to this initial position. Next, let's create the rig controllers. Now there's a couple of ways to do that. Well, first, we can use the quick rigging tool. In this case, you will only have to drag and drop the weapon joint onto the corresponding points on the scheme. And then click Add Rig Elements. But there's a catch. In the current version of Cascader, the Quick Rigging tool regenerates all the controllers each time you add rig elements. Therefore, if you had adjusted any of the controllers manually, all the changes you'd made will be lost. In the future versions of Cascader, it will be possible to manually pick specific rig controllers to generate. But now, if I click Add Rig Elements, the whole rig will regenerate. To avoid that, you have to create the rig controllers for the weapon manually. To do that, select the main weapon joint in the viewport and click this button here. But before you do that, pay attention to the axis settings for the additional point. In a final rig, the additional point is the one responsible for the object's rotation along its main axis. Make sure that the additional point is not on the same line with the two other points. This may lead to the object's rotation being broken in the final rig. Now, in order to pick the right axis for the additional point, you can check the manipulator arrows in the local mode. The sword is placed along the Z axis, thus that axis will not work. Instead, we can choose either X or Y. I'll go for the X axis here. So in the settings tab on the left, we choose local X. And as you can see, the additional point is now placed along the X axis. Now we have to bind the weapon to the character's arm. That means I have to make the weapon controller a child of the hand controller. And to do that, we can use the outliner. So first, we shall locate both the weapon controller and the hand controller. To make it easier, just select the controllers in the viewport and the selection will be highlighted in the outliner. Now you have to select all the elements of the weapon rig, then left mouse drag and drop it into the corresponding hand controller group, just like that. Now the weapon has become a part of the character's hand. There's also a line that appeared between the hand and the weapon, which means they are now connected. Now let's select the weapon rig controllers again and go to Object Properties and open the Points Update Settings tab. If you don't see this tab, click on the eye icon here, which will display the additional tabs. Turn the Bind with Parent option off. 
which will allow us to move the weapon separately from the hand, but this will work only when the weapon rig controllers are selected separately. Then turn on the FK on frame function, this will make the weapon follow the movement of the hand. Now we can go to the animation mode and give it a test. Let's go to the point controller mode. Double click in the object will select all its children. So if I double click the character's hand controller, you could see that the weapon controllers have also been selected. But if I only select the weapon controllers, I can move it separately. Now let's place the weapon into the character's hand, shall we? To do that, go to the box controller mode and select the box controller of the weapon. And go to commands, go to T pose. And because of the steps we've done before, the weapon has now moved to the character's hand. Now let's also check the auto posing mode. The weapon now moves along with the hand which is what we wanted. We're going to go deeper into the best ways to set up point controllers for various kinds of weapons in the next video. Now let's check the other case where the weapon only has the mesh and no joints. Same way we enter the rig mode, go to File, Import FBX Model and select our weapon. It would be really inconvenient to work with mesh only when animating in Cascadeur. Plus, animations like this may break when imported into some software. Besides, the rig controllers can be generated for joints only. So what shall we do? Of course, I will recommend creating a joint skeleton and skinning the mesh to it. But there's no skinning in Cascadeur yet. So let's try another way. Well, you can create joints in Cascadeur and you can arrange them in the hierarchy. To do that, go to Commands, Add, Joint. And then drag this joint onto the handle of the weapon. Now, to make the mesh move along with the joint, we have to pair them. To make the mesh the child of this joint. So let's select our sword mesh in the outliner and then left click, drag and drop it onto the name of the joint we've just created. If your model consists of multiple meshes, you have to make all those meshes children of this joint. And now as you can see, the mesh actually follows the joint. Now let's rename it. Another thing that might help setting up controllers in the future is to create another joint and place it at the very tip of your weapon. Same way, use the commands menu to add this joint and let's place it at the very tip of the blade. Now in the outliner, make the new joint the child of the first one and you can now see them connected in the viewport. And from now on, you can create the controllers the same way we did before and get to animating. Having made the additional joints allows for the direction controller to be automatically placed at the tip of the blade. But of course, this method will only work for the kind of weapon which is not supposed to deform in any kind of a way. So this weapon is not gonna fold or bend or whatever because the second joint has no influence on the mesh. By the way, if your character already has an extra joint for the weapon, you can just make the weapon the child of that joint. In that case, it would be best to first move the mesh into the desired location and only then parent it. And of course, the sword now moves along with the hand. And there's another way of adding weapons to your scene. You can create a weapon rig in a separate scene and then import that rig into the scene with your character. So let's open a new scene and create the rig for the sword here. Same way, import the object into the scene, but this time do not go into the rig mode because without any joints in the scene, the rigging mode will simply not work. I'll create the joints the same way we did before, right in the animation mode.
and when it's done, I can go into the rigging mode. But because the mesh is not skinned to the joints, it's not visible in the viewport. However, I can select it in the outliner and turn its visibility on manually. Go to Object Properties, Basic and set it to Visible. So I create the rig controllers, exit the rigging mode and then save the scene. Now back at the scene with our character, let's go to File, Import, Scene. Now the sword has appeared in the scene, but as a separate character. Now the best way to parent it up now would be to use the constraints. And I will talk about the constraints in a separate video. Another thing that might be challenging sometimes is having the weapon at a different scale than the model. You can obviously change its scale. Well, one of the ways would be to use any 3D software, scale it down, save the file, and then re-import the new version. Or you could scale it down in Cascadeur. So let's do that. If the weapon consists of a single mesh, you can simply change its scale in the Object Properties on the Transform tab. But if it consists of multiple meshes, it may not be that straightforward. And although it will not be efficient to scale the meshes separately, you can always scale the joint to which those meshes are attached to. Again, the best way to place the joints would be along the handle of the weapon, and there's a trick on how to do that efficiently in cases when the weapon is placed under a weird angle like here. First, go to the mesh view, select the handle of the weapon, make sure you're in the local mode, and then press Ctrl C to copy its position. Then go to the joint mode, select the joint, and press Ctrl V. Now, the local axes of the joints are the same as those of the weapon. So here look, once we select the handle, see the axe axis goes that way, and when we select the joints, we can see that it points in the same direction. Now, while in local mode, let's move the joint to the base of our weapon. Now, let's create another joint right away to help us with the rigging process in the future. To make the positions of the joints match perfectly, you can copy the position of the first joint in the global mode by pressing Ctrl C. Then select the second joint, press Ctrl V. And now, when they're in the same spot, you can go back to local mode and move the joints along the handle. Now you can make the second joint the chart of the first one. And also, same as before, make both mashes children of the first joint as well. Now, when I move the first joint, the whole construction moves along. Now to resize this joint, go to Object Properties and on the Transform tab, change its local scale. Well, in this particular case, 15 seems to work fine. And now we have the weapon of the correct size. We can now place it into the character's hand and create all the rig controllers the same way as we did before. So, these are the main ways you can add weapons to your scene and rig them. In the next video, however, we'll go into more detail on how to make the controllers more efficient, as well as how to best use different kinds of weapons in your animation. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.